So tell yeah. us about the wind. All right. So the should I spoil who it is? Well, I mean, I, they're going to read the title of the episode. I don't know. I refuse to believe that our listeners can read. All right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you guys. Welcome to Casuals of Runeterra episode 139. I'm your host, Ryan. Here with the other host, Ed. What's up, everybody? The Casuals of Runeterra, where a count of five takes about three minutes. <laughs> it does. It takes a while. Uh, but how so Caribbean. Caribbean. What? Oh, yeah. So Caribbean. You know what? <laughs> it's not our fault. It's genetics. Damn straight. <laughs> Housekeeping up top. You can always expect it. You can listen to us everywhere. Um, we're right behind you. Email us at podcastcore at gmail.com. Visit us at podcastcore.com. Remember, that's C-O-R for all of our info. Follow us on all the platforms, and then leave a like and comment wherever you're listening because we want to hear from you. But easiest way, word of mouth, tell one friend to worship the winds by listening to the Casuals of Runeterra podcast. That's right. It's your favorite air priests coming at you. And we are here to bring you a fun little episode. And if it's not clear yet, we're talking about the wind. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no physical being at all, anything like that. Just the wind. Just the wind. So tell yeah. us about the wind. All right. So the should I spoil who it is? Well, I mean, I, they're going to read the title of the episode. I, don't know. I refuse to believe that our <laughs> listeners can read. All right. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you guys. All right. Yeah. So we're talking about Jana today. And uh, this would this was a fun episode as far as me like reading through a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Because I, you know, I'm going to make be as transparent as possible. I knew very little about Jana before Same. going into this. So I, I don't even know if it's like a retcon lore or anything. Uh, so this was a fun read. And we got some fun cards to talk about. So we're going to start off with our spell here. And the spell is going to be Divine Draft, which is a Magic? slow... Magic the Gathering? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> Divine Draft, I, I think that is... Um, what is it? Six hundred and fifty gems in arena. <laughs> I know fifteen hundred. Listen here, constructed oh player. Oh god! <laughs> you say constructed player? I'm just cheap. I can't it afford that. Ten dollars. <laughs> Ten dollars. <laughs> There's a quote that I would finish there, but that's for another time. All right. <laughs> Divine Draft. It is a two mana slow speed spell uh, that is deal one to an enemy or the enemy nexus and one to another, uh, which I kind of like this card because it's a nice, you know, kind of fair discount to Static Shock, yep. uh, especially now that Static Shock isn't even in standard anymore. It's a good way to have that effect still in there. Uh, at least with like within P and Z, but it's also fair, right? Like it's not like you can do this at fast speed, like static shock. You're not drawing a card. It's just two mana deal one and one, two mana, two damage. Nice and fair. I'm, I'm down with yep. it. Um, and the flavor on this uh, is uh, nice because uh, it's going to kind of set the stage as far as for what Janna's lore is. Um and the, so the flavor is most Piltovans could care less about the patterns of the wind, but for many Zaun Knights, even a stray breeze smells of salvation. And that is setting the stage very nice because like Zaun is going to be taking kind of front and center yeah. of, of this story, despite the fact that Janna doesn't look like a you know, destitute alley urchin. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes her story so good because it's it's polarizing. Because when you see Jana, you see her in game, you see like her personality and how she's presented to you. You won't expect her to not only be associated with Zahn, but associated with another place we're going to talk about before Zahn. Yes, um, and well, we can actually kind of you know tip our hats over to that area when we go to our follower. Uh, and our follower for today is going to be Miriam Temple Caretaker. Uh, so Miriam Temple Caretaker is a two mana two three, and on the play you have updraft one to either draw one card or refill one of your spell mana. Um, 
and as for as far as for the sake of the the card itself the updraft mechanic is important to Janna. Uh updraft means that you select a card in your hand and you shuffle it back into your deck and reduce its cost by one mana. Um, and unlike the cowards at Wizards of the Coast, this can <laughs> be reduced down to a zero cost this way. Yeah. Um, so the, like that updraft can kind of get like really scary if you're not, you know, keeping it in check. Uh, but otherwise, like the card is awesome because yeah. it, it's straight up just you know eye of the dragon for for piltover and zon right mm -hmm. like you want to you want to play a blocker on turn two that gives you your spell mana back no problem oh you don't need the spell mana no problem I, i'll draw a card instead and uh, it, choices. yeah two mana two three it's great but the quote is why we're bringing it up here mm -hmm. because the quote is a lot <laughs> All right, and convinced that she was saved by the wind spirit as a young girl, Miriam has preached Janna's virtues from her home country of Sharima all the way to Zon. Now serving as the Zon Temple Matriarch, she is dedicated to passing forward Janna's kindness to the young and downtrodden. Uh, so yeah, there's the other region that we're talking about. Like she's traveled all the way from Sharima to to Zine, preaching the word of Janna as far as you know praying for favorable winds so Janna is actually kind of you know like not just uh, pigeonholed into one region which is kind of neat it's not something that I really knew going into this so it was this was a fun bit for me to learn yeah, it, it's huge because it, it opens up her story a lot too right because once again you look at the character she's an OG character as well so there's not much on the surface, but when we get into the story, it's going to be like, oh, shit, that actually plays a big role in some of the properties you like. Uh, and we'll get into that. So, uh, yep, let's get into it. Right. So the topic of this episode, breath of fresh air. Uh, don't worry, it'll, it'll explain itself. It's not it's not that. <laughs> okay, I put some we put some we put some thought into it. So. Since ancient times, sailors prayed to the winds for good weather. This is common in a lot of fantasy. Uh, sometimes the wind would answer, and usually it's seen as like a collection of birds that are behaving in a unique way, um, flying around in certain patterns. And some sailors would claim that one of the birds would turn into a woman, resembling an elf, directing the winds with her staff. And as you can tell, like if you are in Bilgewater and you go back and you tell this story, they're like, oh, you fool. But it's a bit interesting because... Calling someone a fool, we, we talked about this in our Nidalee episode, I believe, where yeah. like if you see something weird going on, or even like uh, Nico is like, you're in Runeterra. These things exist. This is not like the real world where you don't see a centaur running around. <laughs> like, I mean, like we, Anything even in our world, like I've been recently going on like a lot of deep dives on the internet uh -oh. of just like weird creatures. All right, this uh, is where the episode stops. Uh, yeah. No, no, not like that. Not like that. You monster. No, no, like, like watching like people that yeah. are way smarter than me talking about like these weird videos uh, coming up and just having like zoologists explain mm -hmm. like you know what what it is, the genus of it, and why it why it looks as weird as it is. Yeah. Um, and it's like you know going through that. It's I, I think it's like an estimate of like we only know of like fifteen percent of the yep. wildlife in the ocean. Uh huh. Uh, okay, so even in the real world, if someone tells me they saw something really weird and freaky out in the middle of no man's yeah. land of the ocean, I'm I'm going. I'm sure I might take it with a grain of salt, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna write them off completely. Yeah. All right. And this is a world without magic. You <laughs> you live in a world <laughs> where you're at ruination. How many are we at? Six. Yeah. <laughs> like of that all magically cost. And it's like, yo, I saw a bird turn into a lady and she gave us some winds to come back here. Bro, bro, like, it, it, you know what? Thanks to our book club, it was probably a Vestayan sailor that was saying that too. <laughs> it was just like, oh, you're crazy. Get out of here. All right. No, yeah, like, a there's a chance. Saying that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro, you exist. <laughs> so yeah so we get to the the faithful name that comes up in this these ancient times and they call her janarem 
are a Shuriman word for guardian. And naturally, history progresses. People mess up the word constantly, like, like we do, and yes. they decide to just call her Jana because it's easier, right? And for the sake of our show, we're very thankful that this happened. <laughs> yes, we are very thankful. <laughs> and the Shuriman seafaring people of Oshara Va Zan, wink, wink, Ooh. were her most fervent believers at this time. So they raised statues and shrines and gratitude of her benevolence from this point forward. So remember, you know, we'll talk a little bit about geography. Sharima is massive because Sharima, as you have the Ixtali jungle, used to be a fervent ground, right? It was lush. It wasn't always a desert. And that makes sense because the whole northern side of it is on a seacoast. Yep. And the we also have like a seacoast like all the way, mm-hmm. like kind of around it. Like it's basically like the size of a continent. It would yeah. be like, it's kind of like, it's like Africa. Yes. And a lot of people, you know, they see like the, um, like they see the great, uh, the great desert, uh, like near Egypt and stuff. And it's like, oh, Africa is just a wasteland. It's like, no, no, it wouldn't be the center of life in the history as we know it. If it was a wasteland, you idiots. All right. But I, I digress. The, as far as Zahn, Zahn is going to be like closest to the northeastern point of the Shuriman continent, if you think of it as a continent. Mm-hmm. And it, not only is it near that, it's on the coast. Yes. So it is like, uh, as far as with its positioning, like it makes sense that this would be where a lot of Jana's worshippers would congregate because mm-hmm. it's the shortest point between the Shuriman continent and the rest of the Valoran mainland. Yeah. So this is going to be a trade center and who cares the most about having favorable winds? Traders and guys <laughs> that go to out to sea. They care about that stuff because yep. if you're, the winds mess up, you're probably going to die out there. <laughs> exactly. So this was all good and well. And then the fire nation attacked. <laughs> and we've talked about the fire nation in the specific Example, the Shuriman Empire and the Ascended God Warriors. And they came along, and that meant the fall of this culture and what they deemed as false idols. And this gets us in the concept we've talked about specifically with Icathia, where in the past, and we have this in the real world as well, right? When you have imperialism happen, one of the first rules on your checklist are to destroy their history and their culture and then supplant it with your own. And that's exactly what happened. And because of this, if you've listened to like our Volibear episode, you start to lose if you're a demigod or a being that requires worship to power you. You begin to lose that that source. Um, we don't know, though. We don't know what type of being Jana is um, at this yeah. moment. Yeah, at this moment, like we just know of Jana as kind of like a, what we kind of associate the idea of gods in our world, mm-hmm. right? It is just a a being that is in that culture's lore that they worshipped in hopes of receiving favorable winds, kind of like how the Greeks worshipped Poseidon when they mm-hmm. would go out to sea. Yep. Um, it, it's it's kind of more like that, at least like in the writing of uh, Jana's bio at this point. Exactly. So this moves on, you know, obviously time passes, the Empire Falls. If you want to hear about that, there are like <laughs> dozens of hours <laughs> of content out there for you from us. Oh, boy. So check them out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, and like we also get to cover the – as because if you go to our uh, Zir episode, Zerath – um, any of like the ascended gods, we kind of cover that stuff. But then we also covered in like our Aatrox and Varus episodes how the Darkin kind of turned the Shuriman continent into a big old desert. Yeah. So there's a lot of content out there if you want to go through that. <laughs> yeah. So John emerges again after all this in this war and chaos that's going on to protect this city now known as Zon. And she watches this young city grow, and during its growth, because Piltover now starts to exist as well, um, the prayers of Janna began to fade because they wanted to focus on the man-made elements, right? The more modern endeavors, kind of neglecting the gods. This happens as cultures progress all the time. And then there's a cataclysmic day. Now, 
It's not Blue Nation. I know we usually, I know yeah. we don't want to bait you. <laughs> hey, you even prefaced it with cataclysmic, not ruination level. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're just a cataclysm level. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens is during the construction of a canal, because if you remember, I mean, Arcane or how Zon's represented, Piltover is above sea level, right? It's, it's the city in the clouds kind of thing. And Zon is at sea level and then below that. So they're at this point building a, uh, a canal. The specific district called uh, the River Pilt collapses and the current just takes over and rushes in. And at this moment is when people remember, oh shit, Jonna, please don't let this happen to us. And she comes in like a well-funded social security system <laughs> <laughs> and saves thousands of lives. Oh, oh. man. God, to, we could only be so it. lucky. I had to. We could we could only be so lucky. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I like this this is really cool because it um like it it says two things about Jana that we don't really know. Mm -hmm. Uh which the thing number one, uh like her demeanor and the way that she acts. Mm -hmm. uh, is our most recent kind of demigod episode has been Volibear. Yep. Uh, Volibear would not be coming in to save people. Nope. At all. He would probably be tearing down the other side of the river Pilt as well <laughs> so that the river could flow. All right. But yeah. Jonna, Jonna, like, hears cries for help. She goes to help, mm -hmm. like, without a second thought. But the other thing that it also tells us is that, um, like, Jonna doesn't receive her energy necessarily in the same way, or yeah. at least like this is kind of more of a theory of mine, uh, because with the like with our last Volibear episode, we know that like it was basically a gigantic battle that woke him up, and then a priest doing a ritual with the people dying in said battle, yeah, to then wake up Volibear. And Volibear still almost didn't wake up, but it was enough to wake him up, yeah. right. Um, whereas like with Jana, no one's been worshiping her. Like it's was outlawed by Sharima. So everybody's just kind of been like keeping it on the hush hush. It's like, you know, you have your cross necklace, but you're hiding it inside your shirt because yeah. you don't want people to know. Uh, like that, that's what they've been doing. So it's no way, like if it was the same way that she would have a lot of power, but she comes in like a, she comes in like a full on storm. Yeah to save her followers so it's funny like, she, she's got her power <laughs> like you mentioned the fact that it takes in order for volibear to wake up a zealot has to jump into a volcano versus jana you have to send her a text just send her a text message hit her up on <laughs> discord we're not sponsored yet but like yeah. just send her a message and she'll be there yeah like you you you're in her dms and yeah. she remembers you <laughs> That's wild, <laughs> but in, true. In this economy? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we go on to end the story on, is they say from that day, the people never made that mistake again. They didn't want to forget her. She's now remembered in Zon for her benevolence, and they continue to pray to her openly. The most fav faithful, like Hetch mentioned, one of them when we talked about the follower, can be seen wearing their blue bird medallions to represent her. And it shows the reverence, the reverence for the wind goddess. And then Jonna continues to stand for the humble and the meek, determined to never abandon, abandon them. And we've seen this, and it's crazy because the story's short, and that's where it ends um, for the bio. But the bio is pretty short. But we get two prominent representations of how she behaves as a sort of sort of. Uh, uh, oh, well, my stumbling over my my. <laughs> you, you can do it. You can do it. I believe I can in do you. It. I got this, guys. I got Jonna. This. Help him, Jonna. Please. <laughs> But this shows that she is humble, or not all humble herself, but she doesn't have a ego, right? Volibear has an ego. I mean, even Orn has an ego. Yeah. Th these gods that have this power, we talk about the, you know, even on the Targon side of things, a lot of them have like, egos just because of how powerful they are. But she doesn't. Cough, cough, pantheon. <laughs> cough, 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 pantheon. <laughs> <laughs> that idiot. Imagine stumbling into your own demise. <laughs> Whoops, tripped over the stick. Oh, I'm gone. <laughs> Whoops. My hubris. My hubris. <laughs> but yeah, so let's move on to the card. Oh, man, I this also card. love what they did with her in the art in the card because this is a big shift from the game. Oh my um, goodness. Like the shift is ridiculous. Like the first time I saw her card art, I didn't even know it was Jonna. Exactly. Um, like it was like a crazy shift but it's such a 
cool card. Uh, so we have a four mana, two four. Mm -hmm. And on the play, updraft two to draw two at the next round start. So that means, uh, again, with the updraft, it means you pick two cards to shuffle back in, reduce your car yep. their cost. But at your next turn, you're going to draw two cards. All right. And then each round, the first three times you draw a card, reduce the cost by one this round. So she, like, if she can stick for like a turn or two, you're getting ridiculous mana cost reductions of with everything, which is important because her level up is I've seen you play eight cost reduced cards so if you've played eight cards that had their cost reduced while she's in play that's when she flips over and the flip side uh is four mana three five with elusive and at the round start draw one and when you draw a card reduces cost by one so once she flips you're drawing two cards every turn yeah so um, card. just like off the static not only is this a sweet card just as far as like the effects because like everyone knows in card games that card draw and cost reduction are two of the most powerful things that mm -hmm. you can do and this card has it both of them on the same card so yeah. not only is that like super strong and making it a really cool card it is a champion hear me out that doesn't have quick attack <laughs> <laughs> holy cow we did it <laughs> and it's a four mana three five when it flips dumpy dumpy <laughs> she's got a little thing on her she got that little thing on her <laughs> so obviously we care about the the flavor here and it's pretty good because we get some perspective from zon sailors which is something we haven't had or zon ocean dwellers yeah um, like we, we haven't had that in any major riot I mean, media the like legitimately every card that we've ever talked about that is referencing Zon is Kim Tech. Yep. Kim Tech, Kim Tech, Kim Tech, Kim Tech, Kim Tech. A Zonite sailor. Holy cow, they do something other than just play with pollution. <laughs> like we finally get to learn a lot about Zon just off yeah. the fact that it's not all Kim Tech. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that'll lead into something we're gonna talk about after towards the end here. But the quote says, Zahn is closer to Janna than pretty much anywhere else. After all, she's the one who saved the poor souls Piltover left to die. Yeah, if there's if there's answers to be had, I'll get them here. So yeah, they have a reverence, man. I mean, and the, it's really cool because like they I one of the things I love about this quote is that it also kind of like the way that it's written shows that these are like those guys are the salt of the earth still. Yeah. Right. It's not, well, it's not like he is in like a high level of society. The just blue because collar he's not, God. Yeah. <laughs> the blue collar God. Oh my God. She, oh my God. Now, every time that I see her level up animation, I'm going to be like playing kid rock in my head. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, so then like on the flip side, the flavor there is a direct quote from Jana, and it's go no further, violate my protection and you shall see the breath torn from your lungs and your very self scattered by the winds. Uh, so yes, yeah, Jana is still some kind of demigod, yes. right? Like if you piss her off. I mean, talk about her depiction. Oh my goodness. Okay. So Biblically accurate, accurate by the way. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the front side, the front side of the card, like the art is just absolutely like stunning. It's yeah. a completely different take on Jana. It's also like um like the not just that it's a different take, but like there's so much going on in this picture. So like it, just open it up, look at it. It's really cool. But then when we when she flips, did not expect this. I no one was expecting this. It is it, like borderline biblically accurate angel. <laughs> yeah. Like there is no there is no like elf looking Jana there anymore. There is like this bladed halo around her too. Like yeah. what's going on there? Uh, yeah, I believe that she could scatter my body across the winds <laughs> if she wanted to. When she looks like th that, it's, right. it's super. It's very close to, and this is where we start to talk about what are her origins. 
because if you've listened to our Kale episode and soon work on it, it's coming. Just wait. All right. Um, <laughs> their mother, when she's in her biblically accurate form, is not too far from this. I and Food for thought. again, and we don't really know a lot about Jana, but we also know that like she, like. Like as far as like the story of her started spreading throughout Sharima, uh, like pre Empire Sharima, and Mount Targon is on the same continent. Mm-hmm. You might be onto something. Mm-hmm. And she she was willing to like sacrifice her or like you know come out of hiding to save the downtrodden. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a very just thing. Mm-hmm. Um. But, you know, like she traded in her sword for a staff to give the swords to Kale. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll see. But this takes us to the end here where, you know, Hetch and I like to dig a little deeper and give Riot some hints on some things they can do. And what we want to discuss, which we talked about before, is mainly the concept of having an indigenous migration to Zon during an imperialist rule. And that allows Janna as a concept to move with that group of people. And that's a huge thing because Zahn origins are essentially a refugee camp, right? And then to grow into what it becomes and fostering the, the talent of like Chemtech and all that stuff, while also, again, under an imperialism of sorts, more of, an, a, of a capitalist sense with Piltover above it, that's a very big concept, but it's like the groundwork is laid and this could be something that could be brought into Arcane in a very significant um, way. Yeah, and like if they were to bring in like that kind of angle into the story writing too, yeah. it could open the doors to have like some other kind of characters show up within the Arcane series. Uh, because an uh, episode we recorded not too long ago, Samira. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samira, her family are refugees hailing from Sharima, yeah. albeit a part of Sharima that was being taken over by Noxus, and they're refugees from the Noxian invasion. And we know that Samira ends up joining the Noxian army. But, like, who better to send into a place that, you know, is basically built by refugees and who understands their plight than a former refugee? And we already know Noxus, like, thanks to the last season of Arcane, we know that Noxus has already got some interests in what's going Military on with this hex interest. Yeah, so, you know, hey, if you went with this angle, you already got a character that you could introduce that is a popular character. Um, and this isn't just totally me wanting to see Samira animated in Arcane. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's an amazing point because Samira, where we left off with, you know, listen to our Samira episode, There, it's good. And she's a good character. Um, but the growth you then open up for someone from humble beginnings, joining the army in Noxus, essentially being indoctrinated, then having to go to Zaun and crossing paths with a Zaunite, that you you have room to write you to your whim, right? Like you can you can write your ass off for days about that, but if you leave that on the table, then come on, you're, you're missing out. So right, you know you know we we're right here. You know where we're at. Yeah, we post uh, podcast Corey at gmail.com. <laughs> we'll be here all week. <laughs> but yeah, so. Do it. Put in Arcane season three because you're going to get as many seasons as you want because Netflix needs the money. Um, (laughs) But with that, as always, thanks for sticking around. This has been a fun one. Thanks for listening. Oh, yeah. And we'll be back soon with the next episode. Yeah. Take care, everybody.